Guess who's back? Back again. Welcome back to the GCN Tech Show, where I try and answer and solve your bike-related technical problems. So if you've got one, make sure you leave it for me down there in the comment section below, or alternatively, on all forms of social media using the hashtag AskGCNTech. With no further ado, let's crack on. First one in this week comes in from David Harper. I used to go to school, actually, with a guy called David Harper. I wonder if it's you. Let me know in the comments. Either way, question. Do all disc brakes make a noise when climbing, or is it all down to setup? I can't decide if I want discs or not. So many people seem to complain about them. No, they don't. No, 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 David, all disc brakes are not plagued with problems or anything like that. It's probably a case of either poor setup to start with, so poor installation, poor maintenance, as well as sometimes contaminated pads. Now, the reason that lots of disc brakes tend to make a little bit of noise, like you say, is that any imperfections in a rotor or pad tends to be amplified and felt just a little bit more uh, than with a standard rim brake. The reason being, of course, the tolerances are a lot closer. Having used disc brakes for quite some time now on a road bike, I can absolutely reassure you that in the winter, for sure, that is my go-to bike of choice. In the summer, well, I still like to have the traditional rim brakes on there. But yeah, absolutely nothing to worry about there, my friend. Next up is Joseph Leo. Now, Joseph says they bought themselves an old Chioch, Joseph Lucky and Naughty. Those bikes are absolutely beautiful. Uh, and there are some Sora crank arms on it. And the left one always seems to be coming loose and causing a skipping feeling every downstroke. Is there any fix for this or do I need new crank arms and spindle? And if so, can you recommend any that won't break the bank? Joseph then said, update, just recently discovered that the cranks are Octolink. I don't know if that changes anything. Joseph, those old Octolink cranks, eh? They bring back some memories for me. Interestingly, they didn't stay around for very long, did they? Uh, now, it sounds to me like the soft alloy of your Sora left-hand crank arm there is kind of worn away a little bit, probably because you were cycling with it and it wasn't tightened up perfectly, so it's gonna just rock on the axle and therefore it's just gonna erode it, essentially, uh, the, the splines on the actual crank. The best thing I would suggest here, because it's very unlikely you're gonna find a left-hand Sora crank arm for that. I'm pretty sure though that an Ultegra one or 105 or anything will fit on it because of the splines on them were the same depth. Uh, I think it was only the mountain bike ones that vary, but it is quite some time now. It's probably 20 years old, that standard, or more. Yeah, it's probably more, probably 25 years old. Either way, go out and get yourself a new Holotech 2 style. It's gonna be a lot lighter, the system is better, and well, importantly, you're gonna save yourself a little bit of weight on that Chioch. And do you know what? Send in a picture of it, because I've not seen one of those for absolutely ages. Next up is Stephen McFarlane. Now, Stephen says, hi, I have a specialized alley with a nine-speed Sora group set. My hub can accommodate an 11 speaker set. Is it an option that I could upgrade to 11-speed 105 or Ultegra in the future? Certainly possible, no reason not to, because like you say, you've already got that hub, which will work with an 11-speaker set. You will need yourself some levers, new cables, chain, cassette, uh, and also importantly, a rear mech too. And for spot on shifting at the front end, you're gonna need the front derailleur too, but a little secret between you and I, you don't necessarily need it. Next up is Mr. Cross. I hope you're not. Uh, hi GCN Tech, please help. I have a 2016 Giant Propel Advanced 1, which has a Shimano 6800 Ultegra group set. I would like to upgrade to DI2. I don't want to buy a complete DI2 group set. I'm totally confused. What do I need to buy? I find all the wires and junction boxes confusing. Can I use any parts of my 6800 group set with the newer Ultegra DI2 group set? Right, okay, the wires and junction boxes don't need to be that confusing, really. Um, you just simply need to work out the lengths of those cables you require and order them. Uh, now, some of the routings of bikes and things you need to take care of there, because obviously if you're going internal, just take that into account. If you're running all the cables externally, take that into account too, because those cables do actually come, I'm pretty sure, in like 10 millimeter increments. So you wanna make sure you get exactly the right ones in place. Uh, you are gonna need uh, levers, those cables we just spoke about, the derailleurs, but essentially everything else on a battery, obviously. Basically, you just need the electronic components, things like brakes, chain sets, uh, you know, sprockets, your chain, all of those things will work absolutely fine. There's no reason to upgrade any of those. On one of my bikes at home with the i2, I've got a whole mixture of different parts from different group sets on there. You just need to make sure that you've got those electronic cables, the batteries, the derailleurs, and importantly, the shift levers too. Next up, Tanmai Adesai, who says, I wish to upgrade my three by chain rings, 42, 30, 
34, 24, to bigger ones such as 50, 39, 30. I currently have a Shimano Tawny group set with a sealed cartridge type bottom bracket. So will I be able to go ahead with this upgrade? What issues may I face if I keep the rest of the Tawny group set intact? What other components would require a mandatory upgrade if I go with the 50, 39, 30 chain rings? Right, first up, no problem here to do it at all. All you're gonna to need to do is raise your front derailleur a little bit and also get yourself a new chain because remember you've got a bigger chain ring so you need a longer chain to go all the way around it. As for will it work straight away with a square taper seal bottom bracket? Probably not, it depends what sort of uh, model of chain set you are looking for there. Um, but if it's one with a Holotech 2 style or even the Octolink, what, like what we answered on the previous question, you will need a different bottom bracket. But essentially, it will work on your bike absolutely fine. Just remember to raise up that front derailleur, get the new chain, and also check out different options there because generally the old sealed uh, square taper cartridge bottom brackets weigh a lot. You don't want to go lugging around that. Next up is 01 Fozzy S or Fozzies, not sure. Anyway, it says, how about bike colors, John? Like Bernal's yellow, Sagan's green, Alaphilippe too. He was in yellow for a while. Uh, are those bikes wrapped or painted? Fozmeister, nice question here, my friend. Now, most teams, they actually carry around uh, spare frames in all of the different sizes and all the different leader classman colors in their trucks, but they generally hide them away from the riders because it seemed to be a bit of a, a bad luck omen or something like that. So that's why they tend to do that. Uh, so they don't put any pressure on the riders at all to get into the jerseys. But there have been other incidents too where uh, manufacturers of bikes or sponsors have actually driven through the night to ensure that the leader gets a uh, painted bike in time for that day's stage. In fact, why don't you check out the GCN Tech Show that comes out tomorrow because we got to chat to Fausto Pinarello and we found out exactly how Egan Bernal got his bike in time for the Champs-Élysées. Christian, where is the penultimate question? Now Christian says, you get oval chain rings at the front. I've been wondering, why don't you get oval cassettes for the rear wheel? Will it work? Nice question. At first I thought to myself, well, yeah, that's really um, you know, applicable, but there's a reason behind it. The reason being, obviously, when you have the chain rings, they are mounted so that you essentially release the most power based upon the design of them. There's still a lot of debate going on out there whether or not oval chain rings are of benefit and all that. I'm not gonna go down that route, can of worms, not opening it. Um, but obviously they are positioned in such a way that during your most powerful part of your pedal stroke enables that power to be transferred transferred, sorry, more efficiently. On the rear wheel, so on the cassette body, um, obviously you've got a free wheel mechanism, so that oval cassette is never going to be in the correct place, so that's why it just wouldn't work. Full of flaws, I'm afraid. And the final question this week comes in from Bill of Rights, who says, will I ever find true love? What? Oh, it has to be a cycling-related question. Yeah, well, my friends just might ask me, they say, John, maybe one day you'll find true love. I say, maybe there'll be a solution to the one thing, the one thing I can't find. Anyway, right, with all that out of the way, I hope you've enjoyed this week's GCN Tech Clinic. I've absolutely loved answering and solving your tech-related problems, so if you've got one, make sure you leave it for me down there in the comment section below. And as ever, remember to like and share this video with your friends too. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel and also click that little notification icon too. And also check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And while me, I'm gonna go and try and find that true love, until next week.